Hey guys, I just got two different types of headphones from Ashdown Engineering and they're so shiny and beautiful that I figured I would do a review for today's video. So the company that makes these is Meters Music, which appears to be a subsidiary of Ashdown Engineering, or Ashdown is a subsidiary of Meters. I'm not entirely sure of the structure. But anyway, I got a pair of their Meters OV-1 headphones in rose gold and a pair of their wired M ears in tan. Someone contacted me about these headphones on social media, and my first impressions when looking at them online were that they definitely looked consumer. I also wasn't sure why they would have the VU meter that's on the OV-1 headphones since you can't see them while you're wearing them after all, which seems a little silly, but it's still cool looking. They also called the M ears uh, in ears, but they're a little different from what my circles tend to call in ears, since they appear to be high quality consumer earbuds. But anyway, first impressions, both headphones appear to be high quality consumer products, but that's not a bad thing. As audio engineers, it's always good to check our mixes using devices that consumers use, and sometimes it's fun to have some fun headphones. So I went ahead with this review with that in mind. So, according to the Meters Music website, which is metersmusic.com, Ashdown Engineering started in 1997 and has mostly focused on amps, making bass, acoustic, and electric guitar amps for some of the world's leading groups from U2, Foo Fighters, Arcade Fire, The Who, Pink Floyd, Sir Paul McCartney, Black Sabbath, and many, many more. So Meters is taking from that experience with amps and using it to create awesome looking and sounding high-end consumer headphones. So let's check out these headphones. So my initial reactions upon receiving these were that they're nicely packed with lots of padding and a couple layers of boxes. They take good care to ship their products carefully. The included hard cases for the headphones are nice. I've gotten a few pairs of studio headphones and I've accumulated a bunch of earbuds over the years and those rarely seem to come with a hard case like both of these headphones do. They also come with a fancy warranty card, and the overall packaging is very classy. Also, when first taking the headphones out, I noticed that the VU meters actually move and react when I tip them, which makes me think they're legit meters. Okay, so let's start by talking about the big headphones, the OV-1s. It's nice that the headphones come with a few different types of cables. There's a standard stereo 8th inch cable, and then the 1 8th inch that has an extra ring for use with a phone, including the volume buttons and a microphone so that you can use these headphones with your phone. The ears are smaller than I'm used to, but they're surprisingly comfortable. There is a layer of foam that's thicker than I'm used to over the speaker cones, so I'm not sure how that will translate in the sound, but it's good to know that it's there. One thing that you might count as good is that the ears do rotate forwards more than my other studio headphones. The arch that goes above your head also expands in the standard way, and it works well. Also, the rose gold sections feel like real metal, so it seems like a quality build but I'm not sure how long the rose gold section will maintain since there's already a scratch on mine. There are two inputs, so an eighth inch jack and a micro USB, and that's because you do need to charge the headphones, but they do come charged when you get them brand new in case you're wondering. So the micro USB is for charging and the red LED on the headphones lights up when you're charging, and then the eighth inch jack is there so that you can plug in whichever cable you're listening with. There's also a three-way EQ and automatic noise canceling switch that's labeled EQ and ANC. And this allows you to have the VU meter lights on with no ANC, VU lights off with no ANC, and in this middle setting on the button, the VU meter doesn't operate. So in their manual, they say it's VU lights off, but it's really VU meter off because it's not just the lights. And then the third option is VU lights and automatic noise canceling on. With the automatic noise canceling option active, you can hear a higher noise level in the headphones that sounds similar to a very gentle white noise. It's very quiet and there's still some of this when the ANC isn't on, but it's a much lower level when the ANC isn't on. Something that they don't talk about in the manual is that this first setting on this switch, which is labeled in the manual as being VU lights on, no ANC, is labeled on the headphones as EQ, and it definitely changes the EQ setting. The EQ setting is not my jam, it seemed to really muddy things up and I didn't like it. I wouldn't get the headphones for the EQ setting and I definitely prefer either of the other two settings. The meters on these headphones are line level signal indicators and apparently they're placed there so that others can see what level you're listening at, which is great for parents or if you're working with an irresponsible musician that's destroying their hearing, you could just throw these on them for their monitor headphones while recording and babysit their listening levels. 
Another kind of cool feature here is that the manual comes with a little chart that shows you the VU meter in the headphones and tells you comparable decibel levels so people can really understand what they're looking at. So while trying out these headphones, I listened to some stuff that was recorded on a binaural dummy head mic setup with Neumann mics and the spatial response sounded great for headphones. I also noticed that even while listening to my podcasts, there was a good amount of low end. The speaker cones really feel like they're right there next to your ear with a really powerful response, more so than with other headphones I've used, and it has a very powerful and tight low end. So I think I'll be taking these on flights for the noise canceling for sure. But one thing to keep in mind is that you can't use the ANC and also have the meters off, which means to use the ANC, you'll need to have your head glowing while on the plane or the bus or wherever. It's just something to keep in mind if you care one way or another. Now, I obviously prefer studio monitor speakers, but I'm on the move a lot, and I have some very worn-in studio monitor headphones that I use regularly, and I'm very familiar with them. So take this with a grain of salt, but the headphones did feel a little tight on my head compared to my super worn in ones. I'm sure this will get a little better as I get used to them, but if you like headphones that are super light on your head, these are not that. But with that in mind, I did do a comparison between these two headphones by playing some of my Sound Gym games with both headphones back to back. So if you don't know about Sound Gym, it's a site that gives you daily ear training exercises that are geared towards audio engineers. It's pretty cool. So when doing these, I just played each game once with my studio monitor headphones and once with the OV-1 headphones. So it's not exactly a scientific study with a large sample size to say the least, but it did give me some idea of how the two headphones compare. I'd also keep in mind that this is a comparison between a basic but popular studio headphones model, the Sony MDR V600, and high-end consumer headphones. So they are slightly different products, but still, I'll show you how it went. So I started with the EQ filter game, and I definitely did a lot better on this one with my studio headphones. With the meters headphones, I really noticed how much bigger the bass sounded as soon as I switched, but I also got a score that was about half the amount of points that I got with the studio headphones. Next I played the panning game, where you guess where a sound is panned to. I do really well with this game on my studio monitor speakers, but I always bomb this one with the headphones. So unsurprisingly, I screwed up this game about equally with both headphones. Arguably though, I could get used to the headphones and do much better at this game with both sets of headphones. Then I played their EQ Cheetah game, where you guess the frequency that's being boosted as quickly as possible. I actually scored equally on both headphones, same amount of points and everything. So maybe this redeems the frequency aspect of these headphones a bit. And finally, the last game I played was the distortion game, where you guess which sound is more distorted. I thought this one would be particularly interesting since I noticed a bit of muddiness with the EQ feature on with the OV-1s. I played all these games without the EQ or noise cancellation on though, in case you were wondering. With the distortion game, I rocked it with the studio headphones clearing the level at 19,940 points. Unsurprisingly, I didn't do so well with the meters at only 8,200 points. But to be fair, I was at a higher level then, so I don't know how their point system changes between levels. It did seem harder to hear distortion with these headphones for some reason though. So that's it for the big OV-1 headphones. As for the earbuds, when looking at the website, I learned that these earbuds were created by meters in collaboration with U2 bassist Adam Clayton, which is pretty cool. I really appreciate the nice leather texturing on them. The leather does feel pretty fake though, but if you're like me and you're not sure how you feel about buying real leather things anymore, then faux leather might be a good thing. They come in a few colors, black, tan, red, and rose gold. They also have a pretty cool magnet feature where each earbud has a small magnet in it that lets you connect the two earbuds to keep them better organized. They're pretty strong magnets, so they're also good for keeping them from falling off your neck when you're not listening to them but you still want them right there for when you're ready to put them in your ears. They also sound great. The highs are super crisp sounding, maybe almost too much for my liking, and they have a good amount of power throughout the frequency spectrum. If you're in the market for some classy looking earbuds, these are a good choice. Okay, so that's it for today. Before we finish up, I wanted to mention that I made a Patreon. The link is in the description, so if you feel so inclined, I would love for you guys to check that out. Anyway, I hope you guys liked this video, and let me know what you guys think of review videos like this one in the comments below. For today's question, I wanna know, what are your favorite headphones? Please leave your answers in the comments below. Also, if you like this video, please hit the little like button, share the video, or subscribe to my channel. I'll be coming out with new videos every other Wednesday, and thanks for watching. Okay. Share the video, or sub, 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 or sub